A week has passed since I took a sample of rainwater and sediment from the water butts in my garden and sealed it in a jar. And yes, these barrels really are called water butts. Let's take a look at what happened in the first week. In the first few days, I saw a number of different organisms in the jar, some of which are still unidentified at the moment. However, I think we can say with a fair degree of certainty that these are copepods. I had been thinking of copepods as shorter and more squat in morphology than what we're seeing here. But apparently there's some variation in the body shape of different species and families of copepod. And these look to be members of the order Harpacticoida. A big thank you to folks who suggested that in the comments on last week's video. There continued to be a thriving population of little swimming things that are too small and fast to properly identify using the available equipment. At the highest level of magnification, we can get a better idea of the size and shape of some of them. They are less than one-tenth of a millimeter in length, maybe about 90 micrometers, oval in shape and translucent. It's hard to tell whether these might be single-celled organisms such as ciliates or the larvae of some multicellular organism. But watching them swim in and out of the focal plane is really quite hypnotic. The more elongated organisms gave me an initial clue to their identity by the way they moved. This one here can be seen looping in much the same way as an inchworm. That is by gripping the surface alternately with opposite ends of its body. But then we can also see it detach from the surface and swim around in quite an agile fashion. Some of you watching will no doubt by now have identified this as a rotifer. A microscopic multicellular organism, that is, a tiny animal. Let's take a closer look. They feed by sifting out particles of food, which may include other smaller organisms, which they waft through their mouth by means of a ring of cilia, that is, little beating hairs around their mouth. Unfortunately, we can't get a good enough look at them to make out the cilia. This was about the best view I could get. Let's just spend a moment or two watching the rotifer. All of the organisms in this jar, at least those we've observed so far, require oxygen to survive. And that's a limited resource in this sealed container. They are very small though, so their consumption is also small. It's my hope that there will have been some dormant algae or plants in the water or sediment, and that they will grow enough to begin replenishing the oxygen before all the other organisms in there use it all up. There's no real sign of that happening in the first week though, although these tiny brown dots could be algae, hard to say. And there were quite a number of other small things moving around which give us promise that there's more to discover still in this jar. So that's about all we've got for the first week. Not a huge diversity of identified life forms, but certainly a thriving little community. I hope this has been interesting. We'll have another update next week. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.